A very good late afternoon to you and thanks for joining us. I'm James Preston and you're watching Cowkind TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade, and there's no better way to wind down the day than with the latest market close commentary. In today's show, we'll take a look at the overall ASX 200 performance and we'll also explore some of the gainers and losers, home soil headline makers, and we'll also turn our attention to global markets and crypto. So let's get started. September trades are officially done and dusted. Investors spent much of the month reviewing a mixed batch of economic data that showed COVID-19 and the highly contagious Delta variant's impact on consumer spending and the employment market recovery. A lot of factors are contributing to the sinusoidal trend of the share market. Victoria recorded over 1,400 new cases of COVID-19. Soaring coal prices have placed Australia's mining and energy exports on track and the nation's biggest export, iron ore, appears to have peaked. Overseas, the energy crisis engulfing the, engulfing the UK and Europe is being driven by the global shortages and soaring costs of gas and oil. On the property front, borrowing power could be curtailed by loan curbs. Not to forget the highly public unravelling of China Evergrande Group that is shaking markets worldwide. This morning, the Australian share market was set for a positive start with ASX futures pointing to gains of 0.3% at the open. At market close, the ASX 200 outperformed those predictions, gaining 1.9% after setting a new 50-day low. The index has lost 0.52% for the last five days but now sits 3.94% below its 52-week high. It was a good day overall as 11 sectors ended higher along with the ASX 200 index itself. Consumer staples was the best performing sector, gaining 2.22% and 0.71% for the past five days overall. Let's now take a look at the top gainers and losers of the day. The top performer on the ASX pack was Orica, up over 14% after it suggested that positive results for financial year 2021 will be announced on November 11. It was followed by Beach Energy, which was up by 7.84%, and Coden, who jumped by 6.09%. Australia's largest supplier of plumbing and bathroom supplies, Reese, was up by 4.72%, and Treasury Wine Estates rose by 4.2%. On the flip side, Pinnacle Investment Management Group was today's top laggard, down by 3.5%. AGL Energy dropped 2.21%, and Illumina dipped by 1.88%. Oznet Services shares plummeted by 1.5% and IOOF was down by 1.14% today. Let's now shift our focus to the stocks that fetched investors' attention today, beginning, why, beginning with EZZ Life. The life sciences businesses and retailer EZZ Life saw its stock drop by nearly 2% even after they reported a maiden full-year dividend. Net profit rose by 28% for the year, ending June 30. The company moves into financial year 2022 well-placed to leverage multiple targeted growth opportunities as per the comments of Chief Executive Fernando Rodriguez. Moving on to our next headline grabber, Experience Co announced the acquisition of Trees Adventure, Australia's leading operator of zip lining and rope obstacle courses in tree canopies. Experience Co will acquire 100% of the shares in Trees Adventure for a total consideration of 46.9 million Aussie dollars. The tourism and adventure sports business are raising $55 million to finance the acquisition. And on a similar note, Integral Diagnostics will acquire the X-Ray Group for an upfront $37.5 million Aussie dollar deal. The deal could involve another $6.5 million worth of earn-out pay payments out to financial year 2023. The diagnostic business shares rose by 3.5% today. And by now, pay later operator Zipco has also made an agreement with technology giant Microsoft to integrate its payment technology into the browser web Microsoft Edge. Under the deal, Zip's system will be used to facilitate online shopping beginning in the US market. Interestingly, Zip and rivals like Afterpay, which provide short-term instalment loans that compete with credit cards, are racing to gain share in the massive US market. Zip shares traded up by 1.7% today on the ASX. South32 also delivered some major acquisition news. 
Globally diversified mining and metals company South32 has exercised its preemptive rights to acquire up to an additional 25% shareholding in Moselle Alumini from MCA Metals Holding, taking its ownership of the smelter to 72.1%. Interestingly, the miner is working with its partner at Aluma in Brazil to investigate a restart of the smelter using renewable energy. Shares of South32 were up by 2% today. And now let's take a very small break, but don't go too far as we continue looking at our headline-making stocks and global markets on the last trade. Boarding pass, please. Hi, I'm Holly Shields, and I'll be your host for Calkine TV's new show, Travel Insights. Tune in to get the latest developments in the travel and tourism space, from updates on restrictions to travel guides to info about recreation and outdoor activities, or tour guides to the financials of the sector. Though the travel industry has been hit hard from the pandemic, there is still potential left for a revival on the back of economic uptick and COVID safe travel measures. So if you want to know where the travel and tourism space is heading, dust off your passports, pack your bags and watch Travel Insights every Monday exclusively on Calkine TV. Thanks for joining us on Calkine TV. James Preston here with all the market close commentary for The Last Trade. Let's now continue to take a look at some more stocks that are grabbing investors' attention. Fortescue Metals Group notified that a significant incident involving an employee occurred at the Solomon Hub this morning, due to which site operations were temporarily suspended for investigation. The company has since advised that there has been a fatality as a result of the incident. The incident occurred when there was a collapse of ground around the site. Fortescue Metals shares were up by 1.2% today overall. Still on home soil, an Australian conglomerate West Farmers is also in the news. The company announced that the allocation price for shares to be issued through the dividend investment plan for the final dividend to be paid in respect of the period ending June 30, 2021 is 57 Aussie dollars and 6 cents. Shares are expected to be issued to participants in the dividend investment plan on the 7th of October 2021. There's also more news coming from West Farmers' owned hardware chain, Bunnings. It now has a clear way to acquire tile retailer Beaumont Tiles after the Australian Com Competition and Consumer Commission, or the ACCC, decided to approve it. The deal appeared to be problematic at first glance, but the regulator found that Bunnings was not a strong competitor in the tile space, and the move was not a case of a close competitor buying up its rival. West Farmers' shares were up today by around 1%. Now that's the major action on the home front. Let's now turn our attention to the rest of the globe. Asian shares today continue their sinusoidal trends. Indian shares opened flat as auto stocks negated gains in public sector banks with lingering concerns about global economic recovery also weighing on market sentiment. In Hong Kong, shares of debt-laden China Evergrande Group swung wildly as the company looked to set looks set to miss its second bond interest payment in a week. Japanese shares fell as investors struggle to find fresh cues before the new leadership of the country assumes charge, while selling pressure due to a reshuffle of the benchmark Nikkei also weighed on sentiment. The Nikkei share average slipped by 0.45% and the broader topics lost 0.5%. South Korean shares rose after two straight sessions of losses, propelled by the partial rebound on Wall Street overnight that aided investor sentiment. The benchmark Kospi rose by 0.19%. Beyond Asia, Wall Street had a mixed finish. Overnight, technology and communication companies weighed heavily on the market. The S&P 500 rose by 0.2%, though the index is on pace for its first monthly loss since January. The Dow Jones Industrial Average witnessed a 0.3% gain. And just before we wrap up, let's take a quick glance at the crypto space. The global cryptocurrency market capitalization is now sitting at US $1.9 trillion, up by over 3% from just yesterday. Most major cryptocurrencies traded in the green today, 
Bitcoin traded at 41,070 US dollars per piece. And in an interesting development from Europe, Switzerland's financial market supervisor, the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, said that it had approved the country's first fund that invests primarily in crypto assets. The crypto market index fund is restricted to qualified investors and categorized under other funds for alternative investments with particular risk. And lastly, China has banned private virtual currencies and the country is in an advanced stage of issuing a central bank digital currency for public use. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Hope you found the market closing commentary informative. We'll be back tomorrow live from Sydney at 9.30am for the Morning Outlook. Until then, take care and happy trading.